This is the final video in our five part series on how to traverse, add and remove from data structures. In this video, we take a look at hash tables. This video covers how to traverse, add items to and remove items from the hash table data structure. We introduced this data structure in a previous video, and if you haven't yet watched it, go back and watch that first. So we've already covered the various ways we can create or implement a hash table. In addition, for the exam, you need to be able to trace and write code that can traverse a hash table, add and remove items to and from it. And you can achieve this by using either an array and procedural programming or a variety of object orientated approaches. The exam board recommends you gain a general understanding of these methods backed up by practical experience implementing them, as opposed to trying to remember any particular given code pattern. So we'll start by looking at how to add an item to a hash table. As we've mentioned before, hash tables can be implemented in a number of different ways. In this example, we're going to make a few assumptions. The initial text data will be converted into numerical ASCII equivalents. A simple hash function, sum mod 10, will be used. An overflow table is going to be used for storing any collisions. So let's add the item Delaware to this hash table, which already contains four items. We start by calculating the position of the item in the hash table using the hashing function. In this example, we convert the text Florida into its numerical ASCII equivalents and feed that value through the hashing function, giving us the hash value of five. We now check if the position we just calculated is empty. If it is, we insert the new item into this position and stop. However, position five already contains the item Florida, so we need to move on to the next step. Now we use the overflow table. As the first position is empty, we simply insert our new item here and stop. If this position already had an item in it, we would increment through the overflow table in a linear fashion until we found an empty position or discovered the overflow table was full. Next, let's look at how to remove an item from a hash table. Well, if you study the steps required to delete an item from a hash table, you will see it's almost identical. We simply generate the hash value in the same way as before and check the address in the hash table. If it contains the item we're looking for, we delete it. If it doesn't, we search the overflow table in a linear fashion until we either find it or reach the end of the overflow table. As with everything in computing, the item is not really deleted as such. The address is marked as available for use and can be overwritten later. Finally, we'll take a look at how to search and output an item in a hash table. Searching for an item in a hash table is also very similar. We simply generate a hash value in the same way as before and check that address in the hash table. If it contains the item we're looking for, we output it. If it doesn't, we search the overflow table in a linear fashion until we find it or reach the end of the overflow table. The beauty of hash tables is that we don't need to perform long searches to find specific data. We simply calculate a hash value and we should then land on the item we need. We'll only need to perform additional searches if collisions have occurred. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key questions. How do hash tables work? How do you create a hash table? How do you add a data item to a hash table? How do you remove a data item from a hash table? And how do you traverse a hash table? We know that getting to grips with data structures and all the algorithms associated with them is a very tricky area of the course. And so we've produced a book called Essential Algorithms for A-Level Computer Science that's available on Amazon. It covers all the data structures you need to know about, along with the algorithms you need to perform on them, and it covers all the exam boards. We overview each data structure, discussing its typical applications and the operations you can perform on it. We provide a QR code that jumps off to a useful page of additional resources. We then take each data structure and the algorithms you need to perform and present them first in simple structured English, 
then in a diagrammatic format, then in pseudocode, and finally, we present you with fully coded algorithms which you need to cover on the data structures in both Python and VB, so you can actually code them up and practice them yourselves.